Let's look at everything from a you know overview standpoint. There are uh, seven different processors in series in this um, plugin, and to figure out what the order of that is, you click this graph button, and here's a graph of the order in which the signal flows starts in the EQ, goes to the reverb. Then there's a shared crossover where <clears throat> um, you have um, the three multiband sections, dynamics, exciter, and stereo imaging. Those all happen in the shared crossover section. Uh, it goes through a channel ops uh, section where I, I believe that things are summed back together. You have the loudness maximizer, then the spectrum analyzer, and the phase meter which you can actually see on some of these earlier um, plugins, but the, the point at which you are monitoring those things happening is at the end. And then you have this EQ2, which is this post equalizer. And uh, I'm sure there's lots of interesting ways it can be used at the very end of the signal chain like that. But for our purposes, what I wanna do is I'm gonna put it right before the loudness maximizer. So this way we get one more shot at EQ before it hits the final gain stage, which is the loudness maximizer. These are just um, ways to monitor and, and look at audio. There's no, not actually anything that changes about your audio, so it's perfectly okay to have them here. But the last thing in your signal chain should definitely be the loudness maximizer because you don't want to make any additional gain adjustments after that because that's the point where you're going to you know, bring the average level up and put a cap on your um, peak level. So the other order of these pieces is debatable. You could put the dynamics you know, at the end of the crossover section. You could switch the exciter and the stereo imaging, whatever you like. Um, I like to put, um, I like to leave them in this order. For now, I'm gonna control the dynamics and then I'm gonna add excitement and stereo imaging. Um, you know, it's, it's fun to play with them in other orders. There's not a right way to do it. It's just a different sound. Uh, so that's how I'm going to leave mine today. All right. And then let's talk about the individual, um, different elements that you have to work with here. This big button is what selects each of the different pieces. Notice that everything starts in a bypass mode so that you're not eating up CPU up here. Um, with unnecessary pieces on. And um, we're going to turn the power on. That's this button right here. It's the universal sort of power uh, button. That's the bypass on and off. You can also do it here. Same thing. So first there's an equalizer. Right? This is from our same mentality as from our mixing um, tutorials. You're going to remove the junk and boost the parts you want to hear and cut the parts you, you want to hear less of. There's a reverb section, which um, it's a nice sounding reverb, but again, I've never really ever needed a reverb section in the mastering. Um, if I were to do that, I would probably use a convolution reverb of some kind rather than a algorithmic reverb. Um, and uh, so I've, I've actually never, I really don't know this section all that well. Harmonic exciter, dynamics, stereo imaging. Uh, let's talk about our three multiband uh, processors. The harmonic exciter divides the uh, audio uh, into four different bands. It has crossovers. These are called crossovers. It's a point at which the, the audio um, is crossed over by a pair of filters. So there's one filter that isolates this band and another one that isolates this band. And yes, there's some, there's some bleed between them. That's just part of uh, filtering audio. You cannot actually make a truly vertical filter that's a right angle that would isolate everything below 185 hertz from 
the next grouping. They, they do have some overlap. That's just part of how it works. Um, each of these bands can be soloed or by, bypassed. Their processing can be soloed or bypassed entirely. So you can hear the effect of, um, you know, what's going on in just one section at a time or without one section at a time. And the exciter is here to add uh, harmonics. You crank up an amount for the harmonics, and then you blend in how much of that um, excitement that you've added into your mix from completely, it's 100% wet to 100% or 0% wet, um, you know, dry. And you can do that for each of the four bands. So you can isolate, you know, different, different ranges here, and I'll talk about how to, how to set these settings. Um, it's fairly straightforward and easy to use portion of this. Let's jump to the stereo imager, which is also quite easy to use. Um, there's a number of different views for um, this section over here. Uh, this is the vector scope or phase me correlation meter, and it just tells you about the width uh, of your entire um, uh, song as it's playing. And because these are going to be dealing with width amount, this is a narrowing and widening, very much like the uh, utility plugin, uh, but for singular bands. Again, um, you can s divide your audio into different bands, and you'll notice that the crossover points are actually able to be different in the stereo imaging and the dynamics and the harmonic exciter individually. Right? They're they're different for each one. Um, I try and get them you know, somewhat close to each other um, uh, because I'd want to cross over. Every time you cross over audio, you're, you're creating new phase issues. You're starting to, you know, massage different portions of your, of your spectrum um, independently. And so as little phase problems as we can create, the better. The dynamic section is a multiband dynamics processor. And this is without a question, the most difficult and, and complex section of the entire plugin, and the easiest to misuse or abuse or diminish the quality of your audio. So if you don't know what you're doing in here, you don't feel comfortable with what you're doing in here, um, you could start with a preset, you could, um, you could it, bypass it entirely, um, or you can spend a great deal of time getting to know every single setting in here little by little and hearing what the difference is when you move it. Um, as Brian Eno once famously said, if there is a setting in the processor, the setting must be set. In other words, if there's a room for adjustment, you must consider that adjustment. It may be that it sounds good on the setting that it's already on, but if it can be adjusted, you should make sure it's on the right setting. And there are a lot of different places to make adjustments in this plugin. So this is the one that will take you by far the longest to grapple with. Then, as I said previously, there's a post equalizer. It's exactly the same as the pre equalizer, if you will. And this one just comes after everything else, but before the maximizer, that's how we set it up. And it gives you a chance to replace some of the frequencies uh, that maybe you squashed or um, excited or, you know, um, you know, reduced in some way in the dynamic section. Um, this is a chance to add a little bit more emphasis before you get to the maximizer, which is the final dynamics uh, processor. And that's this one. Uh, the maximizer, very much like an L1, L2 um, limiter in the... Um, in the uh, live devices and uh, it has a few more settings than the limiter in live devices but uh, um, it's fairly easy to use and uh, just take some experimentation to find the settings that you like so we're going to do all these great so that will be our intro and uh, we'll get started with the equalizer in just a second <laughs> 